welcome Dara Perez for her recovery story. Thank you, guys. Is it already playing? Hello, everybody. Um, I'm actually going to do a, a small little presentation that I'm working on, and it's called Sick and Tired of Being Sick and Tired and Stuck. But, so I'm going to start off... Um, I'm going to start off with a poem. I'm a, I'm a poet, so I'm going to start off with a poem. It's called Eagle is My Name. I am an eagle, as are so many of us. Art defines our journey. Artist is my name. I am an eagle that soars, given directions from the maker, creator of heaven and earth. I am an eagle, so gentle in my ways, feeling the emotions of others, both living and spiritual. I am an eagle, majestic and brave, I feel the wind beneath my wings, the wind around my feathers, and the wind around my frame. I am an eagle, majestic as he. He knows that eagles are sacred. Eagles are the storytellers of the greatest seekers of the universe. An eagle knows when lessons are taught and when exactly to pay attention. An eagle gives all of its strength and glory. An eagle is strong in all of its ways. He above, around, high, low knows that eagles are blessed creatures and that eagles are indeed chosen. Did you know we each have the ability to be an eagle? Art brings out the eagle in all of us. I will always remember that I am an eagle, grateful and proud. With my head held high, I will always remember eagle is my name. So I'm going to go ahead and start, um, like I said, my presentation is called Sick and Tired of Being Sick and Tired and Stuck. And so um, a lot of this comes, you know, with, with the things that I write. I have three books in a trilogy that's called Life Happens the Way It Happens. And uh, in that I talk about my journey in life, dealing with drug and alcohol addiction, dealing with, uh, I, I'm just very sensitive to a lot of things that happen in life and I and I absorb it. You know, being a writer, I'm very I'm very I'm very observant with, with life and the people and everybody I encounter and I and I have this belief that everything happens for a reason and I'm a big believer in synchronicity. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and read this to you guys. Many of us have heard the phrase, I am just sick and tired of being sick and tired, right? Well, this phrase could mean so many different things to so many different people. For me, and why, is I'm referring it to my health, my creative blockage in my personal life. When I say I am sick and tired of being sick and tired and stuck, I do a lot of experimentation to see what works for me and what doesn't. I have found that drugs and alcohol don't work for me because I get too caught up into where it is, where it begins to take the habit forming of an addiction. I have tried a little bit of substances here and a little bit there to be creative and to create art, poetry, stories, whatever comes to me when I am feeling a little out of sorts. Yes, things do come and I am able to communicate through my spiritual side. And some of the things that come are indeed good work. But then it starts to become a thing that I tend to turn to, which makes me feel like I can't be creative unless I am under the influence. Which, by the way, is total bullshit. It is those whispers in the wind, the ones that are bad, that keep us on a spiral of self-destruction. I talk about the whispers in the wind in one of my biggest presentations. Whispers in the wind, a message of the ancestors. In my presentation, I talk about the concept of angel numbers and how they began working for me. It is where I really began paying attention to the universe. It is where I discovered that we are not alone here that our passed on loved ones are indeed our guardian angels and they indeed guide us to do better and be better. I am a big believer in the dream world, the cloud world, the fire world, the tree world, the rock world. What I'm referring to when I mention these worlds is a world where everything is alive. Dreams have the ability to speak to us and through us. Clouds have the ability to show us things with their shapes. The same with fire, trees, and even rocks. In psychology, there is a word for it. It is called pareidolia. Pareidolia is seeing images in clouds, rocks, fire, and anything that our Im imaginations can create. Who we are, where we've been, and where we are going 
are things to keep in mind when trying to understand periodolia. Leonardo da Vinci wrote of periodolia being a guide for painters to create art. I have come to understand that we are all artists in whatever kind of art we are gifted with. This periodolia stuff really works. When we are clear-minded, it works for us even more. It is then we don't see the bad or evil stuff which we would if on the path of being lost and disillusioned. With a clear mind, instead, we see the joys and beauty of life. When we have clouded minds, the ability to perform dream work is gone. The ability to be as creative can be gone. It lays dormant until we begin to get sick and tired and sick and tired of being stuck. It is then we start the path of clearing the mind and allowing those things to come back. I am very observant and I pay attention to these things. It goes hand in hand with the will of wellness and keeping all areas in our life balanced. I know sometimes this can be hard and a real struggle for some of us, especially when we are in relationships or have people close to us who don't understand the concept of being mindful of the how and whys of life. And it isn't a very productive road in trying to make them understand. Our loved ones don't want to understand things that they are not ready to grasp. They may not want to feel better than their families. They may not want to deal with life and life situations. They may not even love themselves or even life. I have run into people like that who just want life to be over already. They don't care and it can all become very stressful real quick. In a book I'm reading called The Artist's Way, I read in a chapter that it's actually okay to be selfish. It is okay to want the best for ourselves, not only talking about it, but being about it as well. It is okay to say no to our loved ones. It is okay to enjoy the things we enjoy, the things we treat ourselves with for having been productive. We need that reward in life. True people may call us selfish, but that's okay. We know deep inside that we deserve to be selfish at certain times in our lives. We've earned it, am I not right? Many of us are on a different path and different journeys. Many of us are at different stages of addiction. We all suffer from some form of addiction. It could be smoking cigarettes, coffee, gambling, exercise. It doesn't have to be just drugs and alcohol. Addiction is everywhere. If none of us ever struggled with addiction, we wouldn't really get a general understanding of who we are. In my presentations, I always bring up three things that we should always ask ourselves. We should ask ourselves, who am I? Where have I been? And where am I going? When we ask ourselves these three questions and come up with some solid answers, it is then we can begin moving forward to get to that final destination that we're seeking. It's not going to be easy. Nothing in this life is easy. But if we live life with so much heart and emotion, and if we begin understanding energy and how energy works, we can then start to move a few mountains. Speaking of energy, another book that I'm reading is called Quantum of Love. Quantum Love is the understanding of love and quantum physics and how to apply it in all of our life to get along better with our partners, our colleagues, our family, and friends. It is understanding of energy. For example, our emotions are created by energy. When we get angry, people can sense that we are angry and just stay out of our way. When we're happy, people can sense that energy as well. The key to this book and what it teaches is how to shift energy when people least expect it and how to make our energy work in our favor. In result, creating the almost perfect quantum love. And with like anything, it all takes work and time and attention. We all have the ability to create anything that our heart, mind, and soulful energies want. I just recently got a new car. It's a 2014. The newest I've ever drove in a long time. It's something that I can call mine and something that I can say that I did without a co-signer. I did this on my own. And how I obtained this is I had my heart, my mind, and my soul set on what I wanted. I prayed for it. I asked for it. I kept going to work every day. I saved my money. And finally the day came where I drove it out of the lot. 
I was in tears and thanking Creator for making it happen for me, for keeping me grounded and on the path to where it was given to me. My point here, when we have dreams and goals and desires, we can't just sit there and wait for them to be handed to us. We have to give it our all, make those things happen for us. It takes teamwork between God and us. We can't just ask for it and expect to receive it without putting in that work. It's like that childhood story. The childhood story of how when she planted the garden and tended to her garden and no one wanted to help her. I'm talking about the chicken and the hens. And when it was finally time to plow her garden and make bread, still no one wanted to help her. But when there was a finished product, when the bread was there smelling delicious, making stomachs growl, they all wanted it. That is how everyone in life is. They all want a free ride, not thinking about the hard work it takes to create good things and have nice things, go on adventures, write books, do all those things we have desires to do. In a way, it is a form of discipline. A friend and I recently had a conversation about saving money. I told him how lousy I was at it, and he told me that from time to time he himself struggles from saving money as well, and he's in his 70s. Can you imagine at 70 and still have a problem with discipline? Discipline is an everyday thing, it's a moment thing. In AA and NA, they talk about taking addictions, one day at a time, one hour, sometimes even one minute. Discipline is right in there as well. If we think of our addiction as discipline, and if we take it one day at a time, one hour, one minute, it may guarantee us that we may just start getting the hang of this. We could just get so good at it that we could start writing books about it and making a profit and saving the money we need to get where it is we want to go. Sometimes we just need to slow down. Life can get so chaotic for us that we fail to stop and pay attention. We forget to smell the flowers and feel the sun's warmth. We forget to cherish memories and moments. We don't realize that time is gradually passing us by. We gain regrets this way. We start to realize later on down the road, I should have did this, I should have did that. We think now, it's too late. We beat ourselves up and just throw that dream out the window. We need to stop doing that. Life is a learning mechanism. Some of us may have sometimes thought, what is the point of life? Why am I still here? In life, we are given opportunities and chances and blessings to become better people, to be better in our ways, to be great at our gifts, and to be able to understand a little bit more of who we are, where we have been, and where we are going. None of us can reach our final destinations until we get sick and tired of being sick and tired and stuck. My name is Dara J. Perez. I am a local native author, poet, and storyteller who resides here on the beautiful Wind River Reservation. I have completed three works of stories and poems in a trilogy that is called Life Happens the Way It Happens. My first book is called It Never Happened. My second, It Always Happens. My third book is called It's Forever Happening. My books can be found on Barnes & Noble at Amazon, I have books at the Winter River Hotel and Casino gift shop, and I also have books at the Stopping Grounds bookstore in Mr. D's in Lander. I didn't get to bring any, you know, I apologize. For those of you who like to read, you know, instantly, I have my ebooks on Amazon as well. Um, you can find them there. I want to thank you all for giving me your time and attention. I appreciate you all. Water is life.